So here I've got a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus with a non-functional screen. You can see that it only shows a green pixelated image. Now the phone itself works fine. It still rings when you give it a call. It is just the screen that has stopped working. And the problem is that this kind of a screen failure can happen to anyone's smartphone. And if it does, one of the issues that you might run into is how do you recover your important data like your photos, videos, documents, and other items on your smartphone? I mean, every one of us has important data on our phones, right? So in this video, I'm going to show you a method that you can use to recover all your personal files of your Samsung Galaxy smartphone in case the screen stops working. And this is Tech Guy Charlie. Welcome to the channel. Now this seems like a common failure among OLED displays. If you Google Note 10 green display, you will see what I'm talking about. All of these kind of look very similar to what has happened to my phone, but it looks like my Note 10 Plus seems to have suffered a slightly more severe version of this. And it also seems like the touchscreen isn't working, but it actually is. So it is just the OLED display that has suffered some sort of a failure. And I've got very important data on my phone, so let me show you how to recover everything. Now, there are three methods that you can use to get your data off the phone with the defective screen. So the first method is using DeX on a PC and use its drag and drop functionality to copy files onto the computer. But what do you do if your phone does not come with DeX? Well, then you can use the second method, that is the good old USB file transfer. And lastly, if you can't get DeX on a PC and the USB file transfer to work, you can get yourself a USB Type-C to an HDMI adapter and mirror your phone's display to an external screen. Then you can use Samsung's Smart Switch application to copy all your stuff onto a new or an existing Samsung smartphone. So let me show you all of the methods one by one. Now, the easiest and the simplest method is to connect it to a PC and use DeX. The reason why this is simple is because if you use DeX, you can unlock the phone through your PC and you only have to tap on one prompt on the phone. Meanwhile, all the other methods will require you to unlock the phone with your PIN or a passcode. In most cases, you should be able to use your biometrics like your fingerprint to unlock, but for some reason, if you cannot, like if you have restarted the phone which you most likely have, then the biometrics aren't gonna work. In this case, you will need to enter your PIN or a passcode manually to get inside the phone. It is a bit tricky, but not impossible. I mean, if I can unlock my phone without looking at the screen, so can you. Which also brings me to another point, that is, your touchscreen must be functional. It doesn't matter if you cannot see the screen, but the touch functionality must remain intact. Otherwise, there is absolutely no way you are gonna be able to recover your data. With that said, let's move on to method number one. So, to use DeX on a PC, you will need to download the Samsung DeX application on your computer. It is available on Samsung's website, so I will put the link in the video's description. So, install and launch the app on your computer, and then connect your phone to the computer via USB. And once you do, the phone is gonna show a prompt on the screen which we cannot see because the screen doesn't work. But I've got a screenshot of it and the start now button should be around here somewhere. Also a quick side note, the start now prompt appears at the bottom of the screen because I've got the swipe gestures enabled that hides the navigation bar. If you've got the navigation type set to buttons which you most likely do, then the start now prompt will appear slightly above. So keep that in mind. Now let's get back to the video. So it's gonna be a bit tricky without actually seeing the screen, but yeah, let's make sure that the screen is on and no. And once again, oh yeah, there you go. So we were able to successfully start Samsung DeX and now we can go ahead and unlock the phone using our pin or the passcode through our PC. And there you go. And also make sure to allow access to the phone data because this is important. 
Now, one thing you gotta keep in mind is that if you end up restarting your phone, then it's not gonna show you any prompt when you connect your phone to your PC. I'm just demonstrating on the S23 Ultra. So as you can see, even though we have got Dex app running on the PC, it's not showing up any prompt on the phone. So in this case, you will have to enter your PIN or your passcode on the phone. If you've got a PIN code set up, it is actually fairly simple. Let me show you. Okay, so right now both of these screens are off, so I'm gonna wake both of the phones up and swipe up, swipe up. So the numbers should be around here somewhere, so 5, 4, 5, 4, and uh, I hope it unlocked. I think it unlocked because, yeah, it, it did unlock. You can see the gallery icon down over there. So it's not that difficult to unlock the phone even if the screen is not working. I did it without seeing it. So now you can connect the phone to your PC and Dex should start working. So now it shows tap start now on your phone. We cannot see start now, but it should be around here somewhere. And uh, there you go. Now it's working. We can actually see the screen a bit, but yeah, it's pretty much non-responsive. But I've just shown you how to unlock the screen without actually looking at it. So now that we have got Dex running, we can go ahead and start copying stuff from the phone's internal memory onto our PC. So what we are going to do is open the file manager inside Dex and navigate to the internal storage. And here we can drag and drop the DCIM folder onto the desktop. And this is going to copy everything that is inside this folder onto our PC. So this includes all the photos you've taken with the camera, screenshots, screen recordings, and the photos that you might have saved on Snapchat. And depending on how many files you've got, this is going to take a while. So please be patient. And we're done. So copying 15 gigabyte worth of files only took about 10 minutes. And you can do the same with documents, downloads, movies, and music. So that is how you can get your stuff off the phone which has a non-functional screen using Dex on your PC. And as for notes, well, you can always save them as a text or a PDF file. So we are gonna save this in documents. And then you can just drag and drop it onto your PC. So that was our photo note. Now, for some reason, if the file transfer through Dex doesn't work or if your phone doesn't support Dex, then you can always transfer files to the PC by going into this PC and accessing the phone's internal storage from here. The procedure is mostly identical, but in this case, you will first need to manually unlock the phone by entering your PIN. So let's do that. Now I kinda agree, it's a bit difficult to unlock the phone without a reference, but it is still possible. So let's give it a go and there you go, the phone unlocked and now we can connect the phone to the PC via USB. And now it's gonna show one more prompt which says allow access to phone data. The button should be here approximately, so we are gonna tap on allow. And now you should be able to access the phone's internal memory. So the end result is gonna be the same with or without Dex. But one thing you gotta keep in mind that all of these procedures do need a working touchscreen. Doesn't matter if you can see the screen or not, but the touch should be functional. This is because you have to unlock your phone. Even if you connect your phone to an external display, you first have to unlock the phone before you get any sort of a video output. And that brings us to method number two, that is connecting the phone to an external monitor. And the idea is fairly simple, that is to get a video output from the phone's USB-C port onto an external screen and connect a USB mouse so that we can control the phone and eventually copy all the data off it. And for this to work, you will need a couple of things. So first off, get yourself one of these 3-in-1 USB Type-C to HDMI and USB-A adapter. Using this, you can connect your phone to an external monitor and also connect a mouse so that you can actually control the phone. And these are fairly inexpensive and are easily available on Amazon. I'm gonna try and put a link to one of these in the video's description. The next set of things that you're gonna need is a PC monitor or a TV. 
an HDMI cable and a PC mouse. These things are pretty common and I think every one of us has all of these. Okay, so let's set this thing up. Let's plug in the HDMI cable into the monitor or a TV and also in the adapter. Then plug in the mouse receiver into the adapter if it's a wireless mouse or if it's a wired mouse then plug it straight in. And finally plug the adapter in into your phone. And once you do you will see that the monitor will turn on. Now it is showing us a lock icon because we need to unlock the phone to actually see our home screen. For some odd reason these phones don't really output anything on the external display until you have unlocked them. So all you have to do is wake the phone up, swipe up and enter your pin. It's really not that difficult to unlock the phone. If I can do it, so can you. And once the phone is unlocked, we will be able to see our home screen on the external monitor. And now we can use the mouse to control our phone. So that is awesome. And here's a fun fact. This ViewSonic monitor supports USB-C alternate mode which allows you to power the monitor and get the touch and the video signal through a single USB-C cable. So check this out. If you have a monitor which supports USB-C alternate mode, then a single USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 1 cable is all you need. Heck, you don't even need a mouse because this is a touchscreen. The one that comes with your phone will not work so you will need a Type-C 3.1 Gen 1 cable at least for the alternate mode to work. And the monitor that I'm using is ViewSonic TD1655. But even though we have a touchscreen monitor, we still need to unlock the phone using its own touchscreen to get a video output. So you will still need a working touchscreen on your phone to get your data off the phone. But yeah, thought I'd show you this super cool feature. So let's get back to the video. Now, depending on the configuration of your phone, when you plug the adapter in and unlock the phone, you might see Welcome to Samsung DeX tap now on your phone to start. So in this case, to use DeX, you can tap on start now or press the back button to see your home screen on the external display. So this is another possibility that you gotta keep in mind. So from here, you've got two options. You can choose to use the smart switch application to transfer everything onto another Samsung smartphone. And this app will transfer everything that includes your contacts, messages, apps, your photos and videos, accounts, etc, etc. And this app comes pre-installed on every Samsung smartphone. So for demonstration, I've got the Galaxy S10 Plus here, which we are going to use as a recipient phone. And I've done a factory reset on the S10 Plus so you can see it doesn't have anything on it. The only thing that I've done is I've updated all the apps so that we have the latest version of Smart Switch on it. So what we are gonna do is launch the Smart Switch application on both of these phones. Then select receive data on the S10 Plus because this is the recipient phone and then Galaxy and then wireless because we're gonna transfer everything wirelessly. Now on the phone with the defective screen, we are gonna select send data and then click on wireless. And in a couple of seconds, you will see this prompt. Just tap on allow and give the recipient phone couple of seconds to search for the data to transfer. Now the phone is gonna give you an option to select which data to transfer. You've got three options, but I would suggest you to select everything so that you have everything copied over from the old smartphone to the new one. Now it's going to ask you to copy over your Google account from the old device onto the new one, which we obviously want. So copy. Now you've got to enter your pin. So do that. So there you go. The phone has copied over the Google and the Samsung account. Now, if you've got the secure folder enabled and set up, the phone is going to ask you for the secure folder pin. So enter the pin so that it can copy it over to the new phone. And finally tap on next to begin the copying process. And there you go. Now it is copying over stuff from the defective phone onto this one. And this process is gonna take some time so please be patient. For these two phones, it took about 30 minutes to transfer 25 gigabyte worth of files. And after transferring everything, the phone is gonna start organizing the data it has transferred, which is gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes. 
and after the phone finishes organizing the data you're gonna see that the recipient phone looks almost identical to the one that you have transferred the data from even down to the home screen that is awesome right and it looks like it has copied over all of the apps from the other phone let's quickly take a look at the gallery and it looks like all of our photos and videos are here oh looks like samsung notes widget isn't there so let's open up samsung notes and yeah all of our notes are here so looks like smart switch has copied over everything from the defective phone onto this one including our text messages which i cannot show because it contains the banking transactions so yeah this is one of the ways you can copy all your stuff over from a samsung phone with a defective non-functional screen onto a working or a new samsung smartphone now, if the USB or Dexon PC method did not work for you and you still want to transfer all your photos, videos, and your other stuff to your PC, then you can use an app called Samsung Flow. And this app is going to transfer everything that's on your phone to your PC completely wirelessly. And it should come pre-installed on your Samsung phone, but if it's not, you can always download it from the Play Store. So download and install Samsung Flow on both your phone and your PC. On a Windows PC, it is available on the Microsoft Store on both Windows 10 and 11. Now launch the app on both the devices and pair your phone to your PC. I would suggest selecting the Wi-Fi or the LAN option so that you get decent file transfer speeds. And lastly, on your phone, give the Samsung Flow app all the permission it needs so that it can work properly. And when it is ready, you're gonna see this screen. Now tap on the plus button and select whatever you wanna send over to the computer. So you can pick photos, videos, or send over pretty much any file using the file manager option. For demonstration, let's send over some photos. So from here, you can select multiple photos or tap here to open the gallery and select your photos from over here. And once you tap on done, it's going to send over all of the photos to the PC. And the file transfer speeds depends on your wireless router. So I would suggest doing this in a location that has full Wi-Fi signal strength. Anywho, whatever files you send over from the phone to the PC are inside the pictures in a folder called Samsung Flow. So there you go. All of the pictures that we sent over are over here. So yeah, this is another way you can transfer all your data from a Samsung phone which has a non-functioning screen to your computer. Also, check this out. Samsung Flow also allows you to view the phone's display on your Windows PC. So all you have to do is tap on this button which says Smart View and then tap Start Now on the phone to mirror your phone's display onto your PC. So one thing I'm wondering about is what would happen if we disconnect the phone from the external monitor. I think the screen mirroring on our PC should continue to function. So yeah, there you go. The screen mirroring is still working. Meanwhile, we have disconnected the phone from the external monitor. And lastly, once you have transferred everything over to a computer or to a new phone, you might want to do a factory reset to wipe off all your personal data from the defective phone. Like, you must absolutely do a factory reset if you plan on sending the phone for repairs. So to do a factory reset, drop down the notification panel and go to settings. Look for accounts and backup and inside here tap on reset. Then select factory data reset and follow the instructions. And I'm not gonna factory reset my phone just yet because I still wanna check a few things before I do. And with that, we have come to the end of this video. And I sincerely hope that this video was helpful in getting your precious data off a phone with a non-functional screen. And if the video was helpful, then hit the like button because that helps out a lot with the algorithm. And subscribe to the channel if you enjoy watching videos like this one. And guys, if you have any suggestions, you can always leave them in the comments below and I will be more than happy to reply. And as always, this is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.